good early morning, friends. A little bit of positive news this morning. I don't know from an outlook standpoint how bright it's going to be, but nevertheless, we have a slight bit of good news this morning. But first, guys, go check out my good friends at Falco Holsters. Falcoholsters.com. They make some great custom holsters. You can get any kind of either Kydex, leather, or a combination. Custom holsters made for any kind of gun that you want. Check them out. Falcoholsters.com. Check them out. Tell them I sent you. House Joint Resolution number 44 which was the resolution to upend the unconstitutional stabilizing brace of the ATF, did pass committee yesterday. The next step, however, is to be seen on the House floor, to be spoken on the House floor. Obviously, it has a very good chance and will likely pass that. Then it goes to the Senate, where it gets a little more dreary. You have to have, it's so close in the Senate right now that you obviously would have to have the Kirsten Sinemans, the Joe Manchins. Somebody is going to have to flip to the uh, Republican side, obviously, for this to pass. And that also means that all the rhinos on the Republican side, remember, we still have Mitch McConnell in there. All those Republicans would have to pass it at that point. Now, does that even matter? Because then it would go to the desk of Joe Biden. And we know Joe Biden will not sign it as Jim Jordan, Massey, and all those guys have sent it now. Um, obviously, they're going to have to put something common sense in there. So essentially what would happen is there would be so many changes and amendments made that essentially you would end up with another anti-gun bill by the time it got to the president's desk if he were to actually sign that. Am I giving up hope? No, not a, of course I'm not. I still want you to contact congressmen, senators, and all that. But knowing that Joe Biden doesn't even know where he put his last dirty diaper we know that he's not the one making that decision. His shot callers behind the scenes are the ones doing that. So we know it will never pass Joe Biden's desk. Um, it's kind of a, one of those dead on arrival things. I hate to sound pessimistic because I'm usually somewhat optimistic on these types of things because when we, I do think we have a chance. I just don't think at this point there's a whole lot of chance. What really bothers me about situations like this, guys, is that when the Republicans, the supposedly pro-Second Amendment folks, have the House, the Senate, and the White House, they can't seem to ever put a law like this up to be voted on and to potentially pass. I, and I know that the stabilizing brace bill wasn't up back then, but there's no pro-gun legislation that's ever introduced and significantly tried to push through whenever you have control of everything. So it would pass if you tried to pass these things when you had full control and full power. Now that you don't, it seems like window dressing when you put these things up knowing it probably won't pass. Now, I still think it's a good message. And I still think along with a lot of the other things, including Bruin, that we are getting some positive news out there and we're starting to see a groundswell on the Second Amendment constitutional side where people are coming in much more and fuller support of the Second Amendment. So this certainly bodes well in that respect that, I, again, I think it keeps that momentum. It adds to that momentum, if you will. Um, I still think ultimately Bruin is what's going to be the deciding factor in all of these cases. What does that mean? It means more time. It just means that as people are disenfranchised of their constitutional rights, now it has to go through the long, drawn-out court process, get to Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court will once again say, yeah, we already talked about this in Bruin, this is unconstitutional, and then wipe that law away. That's where I think the stabilizing brace ruling is headed. I think at some point, obviously, it's going to go away. But again, at some point. So now you have millions and millions of Americans who are going to be living under potential fear, because let's not forget, my friend John Crump talked about the ATF going door to door in Texas and some other states right now on these force reset triggers. So the ATF is trying to implement their own laws, even though they can only make rule changes. So we are seeing them flex their own muscles a little bit. So I think it's going to have to be the right amount of pushback and your local law enforcement are going to have to be convinced that they should not and will not get any of your support if they are supporting unconstitutional grabs by the ATF. So I think we're seeing more and more down at that state and local level where politics are now going to matter. I know a lot of people look past all that local stuff and think, well, you know, uh, ultimately the Constitution is going to be um, enforced or not reinforced or um, recognized at more of a federal level. And I think now we're going to have to concentrate more on our, on our local smaller elections to make sure that we don't 
give any funding or provide any effort to the ATF whenever they do try to do these unconstitutional thing, un, excuse me, unconstitutional things. Nevertheless, I do think it's great that this happened because again, it adds to the momentum. Do I think that there's any real light at the end of this tunnel? Not necessarily, but again, don't take my word for it. I've been wrong about a lot of things, guys. Have a great day. I'm sorry, I thought this was America. He's over!